And this is a Fox News alert. We're talking about the U.S. Strategic Command saying that it tracked a ballistic missile fired by North Korea before it landed in the sea between the Korean Peninsula and Japan. It is the rogue nation's first such missile test since the start of the Trump presidency, and it comes as Mr. Trump hosted the Japanese Prime Minister for dinner last night. The move drawing a joint rebuke from both of them. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and the President standing together last night after their dinner. The President saying the U.S. stands behind its ally Japan 100 percent. The missile firing just the latest provocation, though, by North Korea. Yeah, Eric, and the threat, we're told, only likely to increase. Military experts predict Kim Jong-un will have the capability to potentially launch a nuclear warhead that could hit us in three years. President Trump tweeted last month that it, quote, won't happen. So how can we prevent a nuclear-armed North Korea? For an answer to that question, we're joined, as always, from Washington by John Bolton. Former ambassador to the United Nations, senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. Fox News contributor is also the chairman of the Gatestone Institute here in New York. Ambassador, uh, sanctions have not deterred Kim Jong un. That sweetheart deal that the Clinton administration made in the 1990s, giving North Korea oil and food uh, in return for them not testing ballistic missiles or having a nuclear program, well, that did not deter his father. What do you think it'll take to try and contain North Korea? Well, I'm not sure there's anything that's going to contain this regime uh, until it achieves its objective uh, of getting a ballistic missile that can carry a nuclear warhead uh, worldwide, essentially. And uh, there are at least some estimates by the U.S. military that put that capability within reach for them as early as 2018, sometime next year. And let me just say here uh, very clearly, if North Korea can do it, uh, Iran is a very short place away from doing it. Just a question of how much hard currency they would give to North Korea. These two countries work together uh, very closely on ballistic missiles uh, and quite likely on nuclear matters as well. So this is more than just an East Asia threat, although there's little doubt in my mind that uh, the North Koreans timed this missile launch uh, to coincide with Japanese Prime Minister Abe meeting with President Trump. Well, they timed it right in the middle of their dinner. I mean, at Mar-a-Lago, basically. And they've done that before. They've had uh, nuclear tests on July 4th, on mem our Memorial Day, on our Columbus Day. They timed them for holidays. So what do you think the message uh, was by Kim Jong-un to the dinner last night and, and both to the Japanese Prime Minister and our President as they sat enjoying a, a, a quiet Saturday evening after playing golf? And then this news comes over the transom. Well, the particular missile, at least the early estimates are, uh, it was a Musadon uh, medium-range ballistic missile, which can not only hit South Korea and Japan, uh, where obviously we have deployed American forces, uh, but also potentially Guam. Now, they've had trouble with this missile, but as they perfect the guidance systems uh, for it, uh, it has a direct impact on their ICBM capabilities as well. So just as uh, the North has done before, they're making it clear they can hit very vulnerable targets, and uh, they're not afraid to show this off as they continue to uh, improve the guidance and range of, of, their, of their missile capabilities. Yeah, how far advanced do you think they can finally get? Well, I think uh, the estimates by U.S. Forces Korea and the South Korean Defense Ministry are on target here. Look, they've detonated five nuclear devices uh, since the first one in 2006. I think they're uh, on the way to... Uh, miniaturizing uh, their warhead in order to uh, fit it under the nose cone of a uh, of a ballistic missile and look this is the same kind of testing that Iran is doing we just saw an Iranian ballistic missile test uh, two weeks ago that violated the uh, UN Security Council resolutions the purpose of the test I think uh, to perfect their ability as well to deliver nuclear weapons. This threat is rising, and for eight years under Obama with respect to North Korea, uh, the Obama policy was what they called strategic patience, which was a synonym for doing nothing. Uh, and we're seeing the consequences now, unfortunately. Well, uh, just this last week, Secretary of Defense James Mattis was in North Korea. That was the first trip, uh, South Korea. That was the first trip. Certainly a message to North Korea and, and the Secretary of Defense talking about deploying the THAAD system in South Korea to protect Seoul as well as to protect our troops uh, that are still stationed in South Korea. This missile launch, uh, obviously, you think, a uh, spark, perhaps, by that promise, by this, vi this uh, mis uh, uh, visit, a message to the Secretary of Defense and the Pentagon? 
Well, quite possibly, but I think the North Koreans are also reacting to something quite interesting in South Korea, which is over the past several years, uh, a change in the South's view of the North. They used to think in South Korea they were essentially immune from this threat of missile launches, certainly nuclear warheads or even chemical or biological weapons from North Korea. But I think in recent years they have increasingly come to worry about the North Korean threat. Uh, and that's why they've been sympathetic to the deployment of THAAD and, and other closer relationships with the U.S. and even Japan related to missile defense. Now, South Korea is in, 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 enmeshed in a terrible government crisis right now. The president uh, uh, impeached, possibly uh, close to being convicted and removed from office. So it's not like South Korea is really in a position to do much uh, one way or the other. But I think Mattis's visit there and to Japan was certainly intended to reassure them that the United States stands with them. I think President Trump uh, said exactly the same thing last night with Prime Minister Abe. Do you think that Kim Jong-un will try and take advantage of the instability that is now occurring in South Korea? I mean, what really realistically do you think are the chances that they may test that, you know, with a missile or that there's some other type of provocation? Well, North, North Korea may not use a missile to, uh, to, to probe in South Korea, but the possibility of an incident along the demilitarized zone, the possibility of an attack on a South Korean uh, warship, which happened several years ago with the sinking of the Chianan, a, a South Korean frigate, uh, all of these things are possible, I think, for Kim Jong-un to show that, uh, that he still has momentum and, and is able to affect developments in the peninsula and around the world. And how do you think this will play out? I mean, what do we do? Do we, can we take out one of their launch pads uh, when we see there's a point when, if they are putting a, a nuclear warhead on a missile, can our satellite imagery uh, do that, something similar to the Cuban Missile Crisis? Well, I'm afraid our intelligence probably isn't good enough to do that, but I do think we've got to look much, much more closely at the possibility of, uh, of some kind of military action, which for years I think had been ruled out by very strong popular opinion in South Korea. And I think one thing that General uh, or Secretary Mattis uh, probably wanted to examine in South Korea was what is the, uh, the, the, the feeling there and, and uh, how far they'd be prepared to go. I mean, what we're seeing is, uh, as well as the end of 25 years now of waiting for China to do something about the North Korea nuclear program. The Chinese repeatedly say they don't want North Korea to have nuclear weapons. They have a unique ability to prevent that from happening. They haven't done anything except give uh, lavish dinners at negotiating sessions. Uh, first for the agreed framework in the Clinton years that you mentioned and then in the six-party talks during the Bush administration. So I think we need to put more pressure on China. Uh, they, they could uh, do a lot to change this circumstance. And what I think the, the long-term solution has to be is the merger of the two Koreas, the end of North Korea, basically. And finally, quickly, uh, the president had the phone conversation on Friday with the Chinese President Xi Jinping in which he uh, adhered to the one state uh, one nation uh, China policy. Do you think they should have done something to get that in return in terms of North Korea? They could have struck some type of deal. Well, I think there are a lot of things you could have gotten from China in exchange for that acknowledgement, and maybe they did get something we don't know about, but uh, I would have made, made them pay a very high price for it. The best you can say is that nobody really understands what the one China phrase means these days anyway, so it may not amount to all that much. All right, Ambassador John Bolton, who's had direct uh, involvement with the North Koreans. As I pointed out in the past, they have called you a, quote, fiendish bloodsucker, as well as a very ugly fellow. We at Fox News do not agree with that. Ambassador, <laughs> as always, good to see you. Thank, Thank you for you your so analysis, much, Eric. Of course.